a survey of scripture shows that all doctrine or teaching can generally be classified into one of two categories depending on its source. With regard to origin, from God the Creator, John 7 verse 16, Acts 13 12, or from God's creation, Colossians 2 verse 22, 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, with regard to truth content, 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 11 to 12, true or false with regard to human source, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, biblical or unbiblical with regard to quality, 1 Timothy 1 verse 10, 6 colon 3, sound or unsound with regard to acceptability, 1 Timothy 1 verse 3, Hebrews 13 verse 9. Familiar or strange with regard to retention, Revelation 2 verse 24, to hold or not to hold with regard to benefit, 1 Timothy 4 verse 6, good or bad with. Regard to value, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, profitable or unprofitable. The modern theological use of the term doctrine is too narrow, distorts the primary biblical use of the term, and can be misleading. It is far better in discussing doctrine to use the term in its broader sense of teaching which certainly includes systematized truth but is not limited to this use, rather than to use doctrine in its secondary sense as though this were the only sense. The teaching of scripture serves as the yardstick, gauge, standard, paradigm, pattern, measure, and plumb line by which all other teaching on any given subject is determined to be true or false, received or rejected, sound or unsound, orthodox or heretical. Three possibility of theology. The possibility of theology has a threefold ground, 1, in the existence of a God who has relations to the universe, 2, in the capacity of the human mind for knowing God and certain of these relations, and 3, in the provision of means by which God is brought into actual contact with the mind, or in other words, in the provision of a revelation. Any particular science is possible only when three conditions combine, namely, the actual existence of the object with which the science deals, the subjective capacity of the human mind to know that object, and the provision of definite means by which the object is brought into contact with the mind. We may illustrate the conditions of theology from Selenology, the science, not of lunar politics, which John Stuart Mill thought so vain a pursuit, but of lunar physics. Selenology has three conditions, 1, the objective existence of the moon, 2, the subjective capacity of the human mind to know the moon, and 3, the provision of some means, e.g., the eye and the telescope, by which the gulf between man and the moon is bridged over, and by which the mind can come into actual cognizance of the facts with regard to the moon.